Percy had just finished helping to build the harbor on Thomas's branch line. A fine job indeed, said the Fat Controller. Would you like to stay and take care of the goods trains on the branch? Oh, yes, please, sir, smiled Percy. One of Percy's first jobs was running a post train in the evenings. He would collect letters and parcels from the harbor at the big station, delivering them to places along the branch. Of course, Percy's rails couldn't take him everywhere. A young postman named Tom Dipper met him at the end of the line, and drove his post van to the villages and towns nestled deep in the Sodor countryside. Percy liked Tom. He always seemed to have a smile on his face. But one morning, Percy found Tom looking rather puzzled. Uh, something the matter, Mr. Tipper? He asked. Percy, did you notice anything strange at the harbor last night? He asked. Percy pondered for a moment. Nothing comes to mind, sir. Well, unless you count the smell of Henry's fish. He chuckled. Tom didn't laugh. This doesn't make any sense, he muttered. Percy's smile fell. What's the matter? My chief got a complaint from a very angry woman this morning. She received a letter from her husband. Impossible, she says, as he died into war. She thinks it's a prank and is blaming us. The chief isn't happy. He thinks I had something to do with it. I only just got this job, Percy. I can't bear to lose it to someone's sick idea of a joke. I promise we'll get to the bottom of this, Mr. Tipper. I'll let you know if I see anything unusual at the docks tonight. Finally, Tom broke a smile. Thank you, Percy. You're a very good friend indeed. With that, Tom turned and headed back to his van. Percy thought about Tom's dilemma all day. He tried to think of something, anything, that might explain what happened. But sadly, nothing came to mind. That night, a low fog hung over the harbor. Percy could barely see the rails in front of him. But all the same, he kept watch for anything peculiar. The fog played on his mind, giving the cranes and ships an ominous feeling. Percy looked to the platform. A man was standing right beside him. Percy jumped in fright. The man was quite pale and dressed in old-fashioned clothes. He looked very sad and weary. Uh, hello, sir, Percy whispered. The man said nothing. Percy plucked up courage. Are you lost, sir? I'm very sorry, but the last passenger train left hours ago. The man shook his head. Then, he held out his hand to Percy. He was clutching a letter. Oh, Percy beamed. You've got post to send. I'm sure my driver would gladly... The man shook his head and thrust the letter at Percy. Oh, I couldn't take it myself, sir. Your letter would fly right off me, and that would never do. If you put it in my vans, I'll make sure it gets delivered. Still looking sad, the man dropped his arm and headed towards the vans. Percy frowned. That was certainly peculiar, he thought. Soon the guard's whistle blew, and he set off into the night. Percy! Percy jolted awake and found the fat controller, Tom Tipper, and two women standing in front of him. The older woman angrily clutched two letters in her hand. I'm sorry to wake you, Percy, the fat controller said, but we've a very urgent matter to attend to. I'd like to introduce you to Ms. Mrs. Winifred Perry, she interjected, and I'll thank you to remember that. Now listen, she said, pointing right at Percy. My husband didn't die in the war to become part of some tasteless joke. Calm down, Mum, said the younger woman. There's no proof this engine and his crew are behind this. No proof they aren't, either, my dear Jane, sniffed Mrs. Perry. Now, I want to get to the bottom of this. 
the Fat Controller recovered. Uh, now, Percy, if you know anything about this, it is of the utmost importance that you tell us. As a matter of fact, sir, he replied, I did see something odd at the harbor last night. He recounted the previous night with the mysterious man. His crew, who had been readying him for work, listened with interest. You're sure he walked back to the vans, Percy? His driver asked. I didn't see anyone else on the platform when we left. Percy felt an accusing glare from Mrs. Perry. Hold on, Percy, interrupted Tom. You said he wore old-fashioned clothes and looked quite pale? The fat controller turned to him. You've seen this man, Mr. Tipper? Tom nodded. The other night, as I was making my deliveries, I saw a man sitting on a bench near to where my van was parked. He didn't seem to have a letter on him, but he looked exactly as Percy described. That was the night before Mrs. Perry's initial call to my chief. Everyone was silent. Well, said Mrs. Perry at last, how do we catch this scoundrel? We should remain vigilant tonight, said Tom. There's a chance he may show up at the harbor or on my road again, if he had a letter. We could stop him in the act. Then I shall be at the harbor tonight, said Mrs. Perry sternly, to catch this cretin myself. I'd better not find that any of you are part of this, she said, and pointed at Percy, his crew, and Tom Tipper. She turned swiftly on her heel and strode back to her car. Sorry about her said Jane as she ran after her mother. The fat controller, still taken aback, stared at Percy. Best be on your guard tonight, he said, and walked back to his office. Percy and his crew didn't say a word. They knew what had to be done. That evening, Percy arrived at the big harbor. Mist swirled all around, and he felt cold and uncomfortable. Still, he was determined to find the man. His driver and fireman helped load the post vans, keeping their eyes on the workmen and the surrounding area. When they finished, they went to speak with the ship's crew about the odd occurrences. Percy was squinting to see through the mist, looking for any signs of the strange man. He heard a sound. Glancing across the harbor, he noticed the men readying the flying kipper. With a sigh of relief, he turned back. Oh, he cried for there was the man right beside him. I suppose you're the one behind those letters then? Percy scowled, regaining composure. The man nodded, his expression blank. Well, I don't know who you think you are, Percy went on, but I don't think Mr. Perry would much appreciate you making jokes in his name. The man said nothing. Instead, he pointed at himself. Yes, you, Percy huffed. Mr. Perry, the man pointed insistently at himself. Percy was confused. Gerald? Percy and the man looked to the station. Mrs. Perry and Jane came walking towards them. Suddenly, it dawned on Percy. The man was Mr. Perry. At the sight of his wife and daughter, Mr. Perry finally broke a smile. Hi, Dad, Jane whispered tears forming in her eyes. Mr. Perry held his hand over his heart, smiling broadly. Then he turned to his wife. It's so nice to see you again, Mrs. Perry smiled as the tears fell from her eyes. You look just as you did leaving on the boat that day. I love you, dear. Mr. Perry blew a kiss to her, then turned and started walking. He stopped when he reached Percy's buffers. He turned towards the little green engine, and though no sound came out, he seemed to mouth the words, Thank you. You're very welcome, sir, Percy smiled softly. With that, Mr. Perry turned and faded into the night air as he walked down the pier. All were silent. I'm sorry for my accusatory tone, Mrs. Perry said at last. My husband sent me letters every week while he was fighting in the war. Never missed a beat. But one week, she sighed, a letter didn't come. That's when I knew something was wrong. She paused to collect herself. 
It seems he wanted to be sure I finally got the last letters. I apologize for thinking you and Mr. Tipper were playing a joke. It seems Gerald felt you two were best suited to deliver them to me. I read them both before we left, and they were the most beautiful letters I've ever received. Percy's crew appeared. They had seen everything as they came off the ship. May we offer you a ride home, ma'am? asked the driver. I think Jane and I are going to stay a while by the sea, smiled Mrs. Perry. But thank you ever so much for the offer. The driver smiled and tipped his cap. Very well, ma'am. Good night. Come on, old boy, he said, turning to Percy. We've got post to deliver. Percy whistled goodbye as he set off out of the harbor. He was glad to have helped Mr. Perry, even if it had been unknowingly, and he knew that somewhere he was smiling down upon his wife and daughter. He puffed off into the cool evening air, excited to tell Tom Tipper the news. <laughs>